Hi everyone, it's Becca from Scratch Magazine here. I hope you're all having a great day. And so today marks World Menopause Day and October is also World Menopause Awareness Month. So this is why we're doing the live today. Shortly we're going to be chatting to Jennifer Young, who is a skincare and wellbeing specialist and she is the founder of the Menopause Plus platform products and training uh, to support menopausal women. Now, if you have a good memory, you may remember we did a live of her early this year, um, but today we're gonna to be talking a bit more about the Menopause Plus, and also because um, understanding and supporting those going through the menopause is about more than today or this month. So we're gonna be talking about what you can do in your business to uh, be aware and support those going through the menopause. So I'll add Jennifer in now and we'll get chatting. Um, and also, if you have any questions throughout. Just... OK, I think she's joining now. Hopefully. Hi. Hey, there I am. I'm looking very dark. I don't know how to get any more light on me, but here I am in a half light. You look great. How are you? <laughs> I'm all right, thanks. Very well indeed. How are you? I'm good, thank you. It's lovely to see you again. It was so great chatting to you earlier this year. So, yeah. It's a pleasure to be back. Thank you for asking me. So, we're doing this today um, because it is World Menopause Day um, and also World Menopause Awareness Month. Um, so, maybe can we kick off? Because the whole point of, of the day and the month is really to raise awareness of the symptoms um, of the menopause. Um, so, could you just tell us a bit about what those are and maybe the impacts they have on a woman's life? Sure. Uh, many and varied is the kind of the headline answer to what are the symptoms of menopause. Uh, we we stick with 34 and I'm not just going to trot out 34 symptoms to you, but other organisations have many more than that. And I, I, I think it's kind of limitless. But yeah. if one were to imagine, I'm assuming that the people on this call have been through puberty and that huge hormonal shift that happens then. This is kind of the same thing, but uh, it's in going in the opposite direction. So at the beginning, it's an upwards turn towards hormonal levels, and now it's a downwards trend towards lower hormonal levels. And we all know, don't we, from having been through that, that it's traumatic and it changes everything. And it's the same kind of thing here. Uh, specific symptoms, I would say sleeplessness, anxiety, depression, uh, increased sweating, the hot flushes that everybody speaks about. Um, the most debilitating people report is hot flushes. That's what they say really gets them. Mm, definitely. I mean, the whole impact that has on your day to day life is just mad, isn't it? Yeah, totally. I mean, if you don't get a good night's sleep, then you can't really function. And if you're having hot flushes and night sweats and you need to get up and change the sheets, then then you're not going to be getting a good night's sleep, are you? Even if yeah. the odds were stacked in your favour, which definitely they're not during menopause. Mm, definitely. So you launched the Menopause Plus platform earlier this year, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, but one of its aims was to change the narrative around menopause, wasn't it? So can you turn to tell us what, what you mean by that? What do you want to change it to? Well, I want to change it from the negative, the minus, to the plus, to the positive, because I, I have had kind of unwittingly a lot of experience of working with menopausal women. And that's because of the work I do with those who are affected by cancer. And just yeah. very briefly, the majority of people, the majority of women who go through treatment for cancer will have an early medically induced menopause and it just happens overnight and we've been helping people with that for ages and ages and ages and i knew that all of the the knowledge that i had from that that space i could take and help others who were going through a natural menopause and i kept kind of you know flirting with the idea and and yeah. stepping back and i realized that the reason i was stepping back is because every time i looked at the provision for menopausal women it was just beyond miserable it mm. was images of prematurely aged women with the head in the hands saying my life is over and yeah. and it's not worth living anymore and it just felt so so different from uh, the reality of it of the women who are going through that and all of the potential positives that there could be that 
I, I just couldn't reconcile myself to doing it until I realized that that's what was holding me back. And when I realized, I thought, oh, so now we can talk about, we can make it beautiful and glamorous and reflect the fact that an awful lot of women who are going through this are beautiful and glamorous and living a life and staying at work and doing really well. And so it's called the Menopause Plus for that very reason, because there are pluses to that life stage. Mm, definitely. I, I love that. I feel like it in the media, especially, it's just... It, it like it seems like such a daunting thing because you think oh god like it's inevitable but it's going to be horrible but it doesn't have to be does it no absolutely not there's loads of um i mean I, some people just kind of sail through and everything's fine some people sail through with support some people struggle and get support and then cope you know just like with anything there is yeah. diff that we react to it with varying degrees of fabulousness mm. but it's not fatal and everybody will get through it and will get out the other side. And there's loads of things that people can do in addition to the, the widely talked about HRT that is proven to support women through menopause. Mm, definitely. So let's talk a bit about the Menopause Plus because obviously that is super amazing. So can you tell us what that offers to both menopausal women and to um, beauty therapists that want to support the clients that are going through the menopause? Sure. Uh, well, Menopause Plus is a consumer site, so that's directed towards women who are going through menopause, provides lots of information and support for them, for their families, loads of insight. A lot of the content on that site is from people talking about their their experiences. And so that's where consumers can go for support. And they can also get their products which are um, specially created for women who are going through menopause and they're very high in substances that will help them and I'll maybe come back to that at the specifics of that in a moment so the yeah. menopause plus is for consumers and there's tons of information and relevant products there therapists we support via a site called Jennifer Young Training and that has specific hormonal balancing treatments training available on it and i'm often asked about what is it that makes them so different and the answer is research so having been kind of hanging around this area for, for so long and dipping my toe in and and knowing so much having so much research behind me for my cancer related work i felt yeah. that if i was going to do it i was going to do it properly so mm. we commissioned some research from a local university that's got a medical school and a health sciences department. And I asked them if they would look at the literature relating to complementary therapies and tell me whether any of it had any proven efficacy. So I could tell people that these things work. Mm -hmm. And they took, it took a while to go through that process. They had a really robust inclusion criteria. They weren't just taking any evidence. It had to be the yeah. best evidence, which is so frustrating for me, but I had nothing to do with it. So they came back with two things, two things that work, uh, acupuncture and phytoestrogens. Now phytoestrogens are plants, which behave like the female hormone estrogen. And when I said that I'd maybe come back to the products being high in, that's what they're high in. They're natural, but they are high in phytoestrogens. So the topical application of those, the putting those on the skin theoretically should help women who are suffering this decline in estrogen. And uh, we call it almost HRT. Uh, so it's definitely not and I'm not making any claims about it being HRT but the theory is it works in the same way as the topical mm. application the patches that HRT comes in and it replaces natural with natural not natural with synthetic as HRT does so yeah. that's our product and then we thought well what are we going to do with them so we developed some I just think fantastic uh, training and I think it's fantastic just because it's so kind of takes things forward and yeah. that we have we offer accredited qualifications of facial and of body treatment and we harness all of the power of acupuncture so we've got two things that are proven to work acupuncture and phytoestrogens phytoestrogens we deal with in the products and the acupuncture we turn into acupressure and I know that as therapists, we all learn about acupressure and we all know that where the points are and we kind of slavishly go down the back of the spine. And I have been taught that and I learned that, but I never really understood why 
or what those particular points were related to. Yeah. So when we were developing the treatments, thought, well, what do we need to achieve? What problems are people going to find? And then linked those to specific acupressure points. So we have 11 symptom groups, which we've identified through research. So they might be things like sleep disturbances, low mood, um, libido issues. And we've then linked those to specific acupressure points. And all of the points that, that we utilize will be covered in the treatment. But then at the end of the treatment, we apply an acupressure plaster, which is like a really tiny seed on the back of a plaster, which we put onto the point and it keeps that pressure up. And yeah. in fact, in, um, in the routine of the body treatment, the clients have all of those acupressure points either side of the spine, all of their bladder points, all of those bladder points have a, a plaster on. So when you turn them over and they lie down, it's like they're lying on an acupressure mat. So they just yeah. get so much more benefit from this really tailored to them experience, mm. which harnesses these things that, that the evidence shows works to reduce the impact of menopausal treatments. So I'm really excited about them. We haven't even started talking about the facial yet, but I'll leave it with them. The body treatment and the facial is, is the same, but different. Mm, amazing. And cause like last time we talked, I don't think um, the qualifications were out or any of the training. So it's really exciting to hear about that and all the research behind it because there hasn't been that much research before now has there no the really and that's kind of the that's the thing really that that shouts at me the most is that this is just a forgotten generation it's like nobody really cares i know lots of people are talking about it now but they're not necessarily talking about the positives or the can do's it's just oh isn't this terrible and isn't yeah. there an injustice that nobody's done the research but nobody's doing it it's yeah. just we're at the moaning stage at the moment which i'm not i'm not very good at hanging around in that space so i've moved moved on mm, it's good you finding ways to to move forward and, and be positive which is great and so with the training obviously people have started doing that now what what sort of responses have been to that has it been really positive it has, it really has been positive in that people like to learn and they like to learn more about things they already know about. So the whole link of acupressure and symptom, that's quite new in the industry and it's not even something which happens in Eastern philosophies. In Eastern philosophies, you'll have acupressure and, and your whole body is balanced. And I wanted to, to move that into the cause and effect almost of you've got this problem because i'm very much problem solution problem solution and i needed to have that in the treatment so yeah. people love that and the those who receive the treatments feel the benefit and they're also learning so they yeah. ha they know where to their acupressure plaster went and we give lifestyle cards out at the end of the treatment so if somebody's saying that hot flushes is their their greatest concern then we will uh, give them a lifestyle card for hot flushes. It'll give them a QR code to a place on our website so they can find the relevant acupressure point and they can either kind of manually stimulate it or they can put a plaster on it too, as well as other lifestyle advice. So it's a really holistic approach, which is absolutely grounded in evidence. Amazing. That's so clever, that QR code, but I love that. It's, not, <laughs> it's just in the treatment. You can go home and carry on if you know what i mean it's important to empower yeah. people that a lot of um there's a lot of control lost at the stage of menopause because your whole body is well just think about how out of control teenagers are and then yeah. kind of take that on a couple of decades so it's nice to give people things that they can do some self-care strategies mm, definitely and so today marks world menopause day but obviously it is important all year round so other than taking part in the qualifications and training, is there any other point as you say that beauty therapists and salons can take on board to maybe make you know their environment a bit more understanding and aware of those suffering from the menopause? Yeah, um, I was speaking to uh, uh, the lovely lady who does my facials locally, and we were just chatting as we do, and she said that. 100% of the conversations in their salon at the moment are about menopause. And yeah. I thought, oh, well, you know, just isn't that a lovely thing to be able to go to your ther therapist and talk about 
the things that concern you and then that therapist can say oh do you know i've just had a lady in and she thought that as well and then you're not on your own so my advice would be to open up the conversation i wouldn't um, necessarily start with it but make it an acceptable topic of conversation and, and if you are starting with the topic say it related to somebody else and did you know that the kind of an educational starter yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah just just not making it taboo is yeah. um probably really important and it definitely has been i mean i thought cancer was the last taboo in the world of therapy and and wellness but it's definitely not there was it is the that world was so much more open to how to help cancer patients than it is to how to help menopausal women definitely we've had quite a few people comment saying you know that it's not they're so glad we're doing this because it isn't talked about as much as they want or they don't feel like they can open up about it i mean even today i was doing some research and i found that um eight out of ten women say their employer um mm. hasn't shared information they can't talk about the menopause it's it's a huge thing especially i think in the workplace as well um so what would your advice maybe be for that because if people want to go into a workplace and feel understood by you know their employer what do you think they can do well it's interesting isn't it that the the conversation around this at the moment makes it voluntary so yeah. the expectation isn't that an employer has a duty to do this yeah. it's just oh well you know if they're a good employer they will do this but actually they have a duty to do it oh yeah and and so that might be my start point if i'm really struggling at work is to have that expectation they're not doing you a favor by yeah. managing the workplace it is your right as an employee to have that managed and just that piece of knowledge sometimes can give somebody confidence to start the conversation and i'm not suggesting they start it in a confrontational way just that they they have that self-belief because it is they deserve to have it so yeah. when that has um, been established and I, I think it's important to remember that in the workplace pregnancy needs to be dealt with in a particular way but the employer can only do that when pregnancy has been disclosed yeah and so it's the same for menopause if somebody is really struggling at work in order to get help one needs to disclose that piece of information yeah. and then the employer has the duty if they don't know they can't do anything yeah so there's two things really uh, understand it's your right and have the courage to talk about it and then there's lots of things I, I think most employers automatically jump to a kind of a menopause cafe and you know we'll, we'll make an open conversation and that's all well and good but i don't think it's enough and i, I also think we we have organizations who come to us who've reached that stage where their employee usually very large organizations groups of women of a relevant age and experience get together and self-support and so they will they'll make their own menopause cafes and they'll have their whatever they want to call their support groups and then they'll get to the stage where they think actually i don't know enough about this so it's it's the same as is happening in the wider conversation they'll sit and, and speak about the the issues but they won't necessarily know what to do about it and yeah. we are often approached by people like that because we can help them to be more constructive and the evidence that we've just been speaking about you know the acupuncture the mm -hmm. um, aromatherapy in that study was was shown to reduce the severity of uh, of hot flushes and if you just have a few bits of information then that's better than nothing and yeah. so I think employee employers should take the lead rather than leaving it to employees to self-care and self-support. And they should give those employees who do want to step up and perhaps be a menopause ambassador some really solid training and information in what can be done to help. Yeah. yeah. And there is um, information that they're on the Menopause Plus for anyone to yeah. look at again. Oh, up. yeah. Yeah, and we also, on Jennifer Young Training, we have menopause coaching and mentoring qualifications. Wow. Because if we go back and think about my lovely therapist who says all of those conversations every day in menopause, then when we launched the site and we started to um, create the materials, we had a photo shoot here. And all of the women who sat sat and spoke to us, mostly therapists, came to have their, their hair and makeup and um, photograph taken. 
they were all chatting to each other about how all of their clients speak to them about menopause. And that was the trigger for the, the coaching qualification because mm. that can only take you so far. And then as a therapist, you need to be able to provide some real strategies for yeah. people to help them to move out of where they are. That's such an amazing idea. I don't, I don't think anyone would have thought that that sort of thing would happen, but it is so amazing that it is. So amazing. Yeah, yeah. And we not only do we teach people about the menopause, and I try to make them independent in terms of, because there's a lot of chat around menopause at the moment, you need to be able to weed out what you want to listen to. So what is it that you want to be telling your clients? Yeah. And what is it really that you just need to see or hear is noise? So we teach them to be independent and, and also give them the skills to coach people through change because often that's very, very uncomfortable, not just like a physical change that menopause is, but just change, yeah. change of job, change of house, change of scenery. Mm. People often will really step back and not want that. And so we give people the skills to be able to recognise and, and move somebody happily through change. It's quite a, an in-depth qualification. That's amazing. And so um, anyone that's watching now that maybe is going through the menopause is really struggling and Obviously, you've given some amazing advice today, but maybe they don't know what to take as the first step um, to, you know, to kind of gain more support. What would you suggest? It depends on the level of struggle. I think if somebody's really struggling, they need to go to a healthcare professional. GP would be my first point of call, depending on how they're struggling, uh, some kind of mental health support. But if somebody is struggling, then they need a healthcare professional. Yeah. Lots of people don't want to go to the doctor i think we've got a stat on the website that 38 percent of people will ask a doctor for help women will ask a doctor for help and that leaves 62 percent of people who won't and for that 62 percent i would suggest that you look into whatever sits well with your philosophy so yeah. if you're a natural kind of a person then i would take a look at, at the alternatives to hrt that are available to you in the form of complementary therapies. Mm, yeah, definitely. Um, and so how can anyone watching that's interested access the Menopause Plus um, and its products and, and your training? Uh, two websites, themenopauseplus.com has got all of the consumer information, all of the, the products for retail. And so if you are an individual who's struggling, then that's a good place to go for products and resources. And if you're a therapist who wants to help others, who wants to help others, then go to jenniferyoungtraining.com and that's got all of our qualifications on. Mm. Miz, I really hope lots of people take part because it's so important to have that understanding and awareness of how to support, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. And just, you know, starting a conversation, making it yeah. normal. We have, uh, we're about to launch a campaign called Men Unpaused. And it's about allowing men to have that conversation because they tend not to know an awful lot about it. I mean, women don't know an awful lot about it. And it's an inevitable life stage for them. Yeah. So for men who are just often caught in the crossfire, there can be collateral damage. So we're trying to, to open up that world of knowledge to them so that they, if they dare, can start the conversation or support should they be needed to support. Definitely, because it's not just women that should be supported, and everyone should know, shouldn't they? Yeah, for sure, absolutely. Um, it, it needs to be, but I don't really understand why it's not spoken about, I've never yeah. understood it, but there are, there are some um, barriers to that open conversation and we're trying to break down those barriers. I love that so much. It's, it's so inspirational to hear you talk about. And I mean, we've had so many comments of people saying this is so great to actually hear this and know that there's people out there that are talking about it, which is great. Well, thank you for everybody's comments and thank you for having the conversation, for breaking those barriers down and opening it up to others. Thank you so much. Uh, it's been amazing. So, yeah, I really hope people take part in the training and all of that. Thank you very much. And thank you for inviting me. It's always a pleasure. Thank you so much. Take care. Take care.